Gee, www.whatthef***.com. Last time I was here, 10 years ago, this was a fragrant slash fetid wonderland of mystery meats, itinerant vendors. You had to sort of walk along, ducking underneath sort of uh, tarpaulins and makeshift cloth coverings, going from stall to stall, eating all sorts of mysterious squiggly bits. Now, I mean, this is like, I guess I could use a t-shirt. A newly painted, cleaned up, more tourist-friendly central market. A striking difference about which I have, of course, mixed emotions. T-shirt? You like Avatar? DVD? You like CD by American Band? Van Halen? Sammy Hager, very good. These streets weren't paved last time I was here. It was wilder and far more dangerous. A place still reeling from the days when this city was reduced from a population of two million to just a few Khmer Rouge officials. Clerks, office workers, taxi drivers, cooks were marched into the country and forced to farm. Anyone unfortunate enough to be a doctor, a lawyer, a professional, multilingual, even if they only wore glasses, they were killed. One must admit that things look strikingly better, at least on the surface. And there are cool-looking, non-touristy markets, large and small, all over the place. And I've also said it over and over again, if you're going to a country, and particularly in Southeast Asia, you've never been before, it's a very good idea to go to the market first, see what they're selling, get an idea of, you know, what they're good at, that people are buying. This is more the way I remember Cambodia. It's smelling like jackfruit, wood smoke, dried fish, raw chicken, and breakfast. This is certainly more familiar territory, but the food seems better, the conditions better, the vibe less desperate than I remember. I do love the spectacular array of condiments in this country. I mean, look at this. In this part of the world in general, but extravaganza, one might say. Katya, a pho-like noodle soup with chicken, pork meatballs, and greens in a vibrant-looking and tasty broth. Always the expressway to my heart. Oh, that's beautiful, huh? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Just when you think you're dying of heat stroke, exhaustion, jet lag, and dehydration, a bowl of spicy noodles saves the day. Robin Williams ate this shit. His back hair would burst into flames. See, that's a healthy sweat. Not a, I'm currently dying, please get me oxygen kind of sweat. That's a, I feel pretty good about the world, kind of a sweat. Ooh, meatball. It's good stuff. It's pretty, too. Nice colors. Oh. Ten years since I've been here. It's better. Cambodia, day two. And here's where things go terribly wrong. Last time I was here, I got my hair cut. They do that here, right out on the street. Rows of barbers ready to give you an open air job. I'm a big believer in sidewalk grooming. Last time, everybody in Cambodia seemed to get the same haircut. Not a bad look, kind of a young Elvis, rogue Jonas brother kind of a thing. Yeah, he looks like he does good work. I trust that man with a razor. I figured, what the hey, clean it up a bit, get it trim. Good TV, right? Whoa. <laughs> That's not good. Just a little bit. <laughs> Within seconds, one second. That's all it took to go from reasonably normal, happy guy to looking like someone from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Whoa, 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 whoa. Thank you for stopping him. Not too short. Just a little. 
Guy dives right in, mows me right down to the scalp, and gives me a haircut I could only describe as post-lobotomy. Thank you, sir. Ah, looking good. Well, not really. My producer, Tom Vitale here, is supposed to be on this. He memorized the Khmer word for trim and everything. Though apparently he confused that word in his mind with the word for shave that mother down to the polished sun-bleached skull. Tom, the part where they start to shave me bald, that's generally the time when the producer steps in. I didn't want a stovepipe. Oh, it looks good, yeah. it's youthful. Yeah, I think I look like I swam too close to Three Mile Island. Your turn now, my friend. Yeah, you can look as good as me. That's not possible. It's interesting with the glasses. Yes, thank you. Suddenly, getting out of town seems like a very good idea. So I head south on the open Cambodian highway. A kidney-crushing enterprise, but a hugely improved and safer situation than last time I was here. Along the way, remnants of Cambodia's past. Ten years ago, at Angkor Wat, the centuries-old seat of power of the Khmer Empire, I gave up taking photographs of my travels. How could any lens capture the scale, the grandeur of a kingdom that once ruled this part of the world and then inexplicably crumbled into the jungle? It's been an enduring mystery ever since. What happened? What exactly went wrong? And apparently very quickly. Continuing south towards the Gulf of Thailand, it's another two hours over bumpy, dusty highway until right there, hiding in plain sight, something well worth an unscheduled stop. All right, look at this. Really fresh, incredibly delicious spring rolls in the middle of freaking nowhere. Oh, that's pretty. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. And the hits keep coming. Oh, it's really kooky. All these shrimp, a little herb, and it's like a mix of radish and, and potato. It's really refreshing. And here we are, a food that in Manhattan would blow anybody away. They have a line out the door for this. Pork skin, rice noodle, mint, cucumber, salad, green, and then, of course, uh, this fried. Delicious, satisfying, and refreshing. This lady just keeps giving me stuff. I don't know what it is. Ooh. Glutinous rice, coconut, feels sort of testicular. Mm. 